Welcome back to Senate Education, April 14th, Wednesday, 2.46 p.m. We're uh, moving on to uh, the State Board of Education. Senators will recall our letter uh, from the Social Equity Caucus uh, and our conversation with Representative Christie last week. We agreed that Mr. Demaray would draft some language uh, that would work toward making the State Board more uh, diverse, more inclusive. Uh, and so I've asked Mr. Demaray to take us through that. And I've asked Jeannie to have Representative Christie in tomorrow afternoon to, uh, to give us his feedback. Um, and Jeannie is going to send him that language today. So he has the night to uh, talk to colleagues and others. So we might uh, be able to hopefully do something with this language this year. I think it, it warrants that uh, there is, um, uh, my anticipation is, uh, or what I suspect is we would use one of the House bills, uh, likely H101, which was their literacy bill, as a vehicle for this uh, and possibly other things. Uh, the House did pass out uh, our literacy bill yesterday. The, the, the um, oh, good. S114 left committee on a vote of 11 0 0. Nice. Uh, some changes, a few few changes, uh, and Mr. Demaray will take us through those changes tomorrow, and we'll hear from the Agency of Education uh, and Chelsea Myers. Uh, the agency, in particular, were the were the recommenders of the changes, so we'll hear from from them. And um, Chelsea Myers has been helpful uh, all the way along in this process, so we'll hear from her as well. But for now, let us go to this discussion and see if we might have language that we all are comfortable with. And then, like I said, uh, we'll hear from the Social Equity Caucus tomorrow. Mr. Demaret. Okay. I believe our, the language is up on our web page. So I missed your testimony last week. Uh, Joan was covering for me. Um, oh, right, that's right. And she asked me, she, um, gave me feedback that you wanted me to look at uh, how various other states approach this with their uh, state boards or, or councils. Uh, I did look at um, the laws in New England states and New York state. Uh, there wasn't much actually, um, there was a couple of things, but uh, I used those examples to draft this language um, so you'll see on page one, we're amending the section 161, uh, which is the State Board of Education um, appointment of members. And uh, you'll see on line 11, we already have a statute, the, the requirement that to the extent possible, the members shall represent geographically diverse areas of the state. Um, so this draft strikes that language and says, to the extent possible, the members shall represent the state's geographic, gender, racial, and cultural diversity. Um, other states had versions of that. Um, I didn't keep track of which states which, but you, I saw ones that said, um, the commission members shall reflect the state's geographic, racial, and ethnic diversity. Um, there's one that said the membership of the board must be representative of geographic diversity and gender balance. So you have approaches similar to this in other states. Um, and then the last sentence here um, says, for the purpose of obtaining input from diverse sources for nominations by the governor, the governor shall convene a public meeting to obtain broad input prior to making a nomination for a member on the state board. That idea came from um, the uh, Rhode Island School for the Deaf. Uh, they've got that kind of language uh, there for their um, school. So I borrowed that in concept for this. Thank you. Uh, Senator Lyons, Perchlick, Chris Lyons. So I was going to just say, uh, I'm less familiar with, I know it's a six year term, but the frequency with which a public meeting might have to be held mm. to appoint someone, you know, if it's every year, that, that becomes problematic. It does establish a model for 
how many thousands of boards we have so and uh, that are that are similarly important so i'm wondering if there's a better way to get at the public participation than having a uh, the governor hold a meeting i, I share know. that concern but it, it's an important it's an important issue it's just yeah. how it's done that's all senator Persley. yeah i was gonna have similar concerns about requiring a public meeting I used to work for the state where we were required to have public meetings, but nobody ever came, you know, we had to advertise for them. So, you know, if, I think it'd be better to require the governor to get names or ha have a have a process to where people can nominate names, because I can just see that a public meeting just kind of being forgotten about, not, not, not necessarily, if nobody comes, then he doesn't get any nominations, but I guess it's the same if he just puts out a call or he or she puts out a call for nominations, then and nobody nominates them. And in other places, we have a process where some other entity makes nominations, um, which I don't know if that's more complicated than we want to get here, but that I, I wondered about the public meeting part. And then I also, is it clear or do we need to be clear on what we mean by cultural diversity? Because mm. I, I could see people defining that differently. Um, but I don't know if we, if, if we all have, would have the same idea of what a culturally diverse board would look like. Does that definition exist in statute, Mr. Demaray, or do, do we have a definition of cultural diversity somewhere? No. No. Okay. Senator what, Lyman. What, what about ethnic? What does ethnic do for us? Ethnic diversity with gender, gender um, racial, ethnic. We used that term in the ethnic studies bill. And yeah. In, in, uh, yeah. And it does have implications around uh, cultural differences mm -hmm. and we certainly have different ethnic groups in our state i think it's a little easier to be to make a point about it i mean we just heard testimony that linden and johnson university had different cultures so would that be cultural <laughs> diversity that's a very, good point. That's a very good point <laughs> Senator Hooker. We're looking at BIPOC communities. I, I don't know if, you know, is that something that we would put in, in statute? Yeah. I would assume that's the racial that's part. That's the racial yeah. diversity. Yeah. Yeah. If I may, Senator Persley, would you say a bit more just about uh, the ethnic, uh, the cultural ethnic studies curriculum? I'm sorry, but uh, I'm forgetting the, the accurate name, but the language there, so it was. Um, I think it's just called the ethnic studies bill. So that's what we've referred to it, but I don't know. I think it did have more language, obviously, in the bill. And I think even in, we could look that look that up. I don't, I don't have it at the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with everyone that has shared the concern about the public meeting. Uh, I think if, again, we were to work and, and I agree with Senator Lyons and Senator Perchlick around cultural diversity uh, and moving toward ethnic diversity. Um, that might that might be enough, but uh, that if Jim, if you could uh, look around a little bit, continue to look around a little bit, and again we'll have Representative Christie in uh, to to weigh on, in on this tomorrow. But is everyone comfortable if we? do not uh, require the governor to convene a public meeting. Okay, yeah, Senator Hooker. People apply for this or does the governor choose somebody? Because with like judicial nominating, people apply and then the judicial nominating board vets those people and then sends, you know, um, suggestions, nominates to the governor. Who then and my, my understanding is that the governor in, uh, appoints. Um, I don't believe there is any kind of application process. Uh, and I think Mr. Demery just posted a little bit of information on that. Uh, Jim, do you want to add something? I just posted Act 1 uh, for you, which is uh, it has a lot of information about these 
topics, right? So, yeah. Oh. Ask where it's from, right, a couple years ago. Yeah, Center Alliance. So uh, the governor does have an application form on uh, somewhere. If you look for it, you can find it uh, for boards, commissions, and committees. And then it gets filled out by the individuals. And from that, then I don't know what happens after that, whether there's an interview or, or what. Now, so then the question arises about identifying racial and ethnic differences and whether or not it is legal <laughs> to ask for that information. So that's, Jim, is it legal to ask someone what their racial or ethnic background is and an application for a position such as this? Not an employment lawyer, I'm not sure. This is not um, employment though. This is obviously in the context of a board appointment. I don't know the answer. I have to check with probably Damien or another, another lawyer on that. Well, yeah, so, so, I mean, I think people might be fine with disclosing who they are, uh, but it, it does raise that question for me anyway, but thank you for looking for that. I mean, there was some language that we looked at early on, or it was from the governor's uh, press person that said, again, generally Governor Scott is looking to fill positions and have them more representative of, of the Vermont today and the Vermont we want to be and, and have uh, greater diversity in on our boards and commissions and appointments and recognizing that it didn't happen this time. So I think there are some guiding principles out there in general that the governor is following. Uh, and this would, again, just give some specificity and some direction um, on, on this. But one thing that I think might be helpful uh, for us tomorrow, Jim, before having, uh, when we hear from Coach Christie, if you would be so kind as to uh, figure out between now and then, and if you can't, I can, uh, just let me know, uh, really what is this process? Are people actually in general filling out applications and putting them forward? Is that acceptable or, or are these, I've always seen these as more, hey, I'm, I'm now the governor and I know that Senator Lyons used to be on the education committee and I, I'd like her to, to take that this position. That's how I've, but sh still I may require that Senator Lyons fills out an application, but I think it would be good for the committee to, to just know what exactly that process is. Yeah, I don't have a contact at the administration, uh, so, I'm happy to look into that, but I could use some help with the contact because I, I don't even know who to go to. I will take it on. I will reach out to Kendall and uh, and I th and she'll be able to, and maybe she could even come in tomorrow. Jeannie, would you ask Kendall to come in tomorrow? Yes, center lines. So, and, and Susanna Davis, maybe. Uh, Kendall can link in with her. Oh, that's a good idea. That's and a good idea. We have an expert on... Uh, Diversity and uh, in healthcare coming into our committee on Friday, and if Senator Hooker remembers, we can try to ask a question about ethnicity. Anyway, as I, I looked at the definition in the bill that Jim just posted, or the information that you just posted, and it does have a definition of for ethnic groups on page something, <laughs> what page it was on. But it's there. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, did you hear that request from me, Kendall Smith in the governor's office? I did just now. And did Senator Lyons suggest someone? Uh, I think we'll just start with Kendall um, and uh, ask her to come in and ask her to just take us through the appointment process for the State Board of Education, how it works, uh, is an application filled out, et cetera. And uh, if you would have her, please come in uh, when Coach Christie comes in as well. Okay. And then we'll, I believe, uh, I will ask Representative Christie to follow up with Ms. Davis uh, this evening at Center Lyons. Good suggestion, because I believe Ms. Davis is also integrally involved with the Social Equity Caucus. So I'll make sure that that happens 
uh, before tomorrow as well. Good suggestion. Uh, so Jim, if you don't mind, we, we are in agreement that we will strike that last bit about a public meeting yep. and, and uh, we will work, uh, we'll hear more from uh, Kendall tomorrow, as well as we'll hear from Representative Christie and I'll ask Rep. Christie to talk to uh, Ms. Davis tonight. And do you want me to start the reference to cultural diversity? Uh, yes, I think our I think the committee feels uh, ethnic diversity would be better. I've not seen yeah. any opposition to that. So, um, and I'll also, if you wouldn't mind, if it's uh, if you wouldn't mind just emailing me the clean draft uh, to Jeannie and to me, and I'll have Jeannie get the new draft to Coach Christie. Sure, yep, yeah. that'd be great. The definition of ethnic groups is on page three of the link that Jim just sent. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? Any questions? Sounds like, and again, my hope would be to um, uh, move this this year uh, on the H bill and I'll work with uh, Representative Webb a little bit so that uh, when they get it, they'll, they'll also hopefully be comfortable with it. So going forward, um, this is uh, this will be a new policy. And we'll have to hear from a few other people as well. Final thing before uh, we move on, I would just mention, uh, you know, we are going to continue today as soon as Ms. Wasserman is available on H-426, and we also have the uh, the pilot program for, um, for what is it called, the schools, uh, not universal schools, but um, community, sorry, community. community schools. I am going to look uh, at some language. One of the things I would like to add into that, uh, if colleagues are comfortable, and I'll bring the language forward, is to also tie some of our literacy work into community schools to see if there are ways to also um, continue to sort of focus on literacy. And I'll work with, with Jim and others on that. Um, we'll pick that up next week. Okay, Jeannie, if you wouldn't mind uh, seeing if Rebecca is available, um, that would be great. And committee, why don't we uh, touch base in uh, 15 minutes? Great, thank you.